Welcome everyone to Resta Slam. Um, I am Matt. Yeah, I know. I got hosting duties. What's gonna happen? We're live. What's gonna happen is gonna happen. Jay unfortunately couldn't make it, but uh, we are now we are with the man himself, the man behind the camera, the every man, the filmmaker, and the all around sex machine himself, Phil Connolly. How are you doing, Phil? How are we? I got a nice fresh haircut for today, especially yeah. for today. Yeah, just for today. Yeah. Just for today, you're thinking of us, Phil. Do you want to show it off for the backsides and everything? Look at that. Look it at looks that. good. I'm very happy. I, I usually like to kind of keep it long, but I decided this time just short, 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 short and sweet. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you, you need to show off those eyes, like, what can you say? Exactly. Like, yeah, just for today, Phil, you're freshly cut, freshly looking good. You're looking fantastic. And look, as you can see, I'm I'm going a bit of hair at the sides. Look, yeah. Check. And just like slightly on top, yeah. I look like a like a lecture professor right now. Everything is <laughs> cool. but look, today is a grand day. Grand day to the show. You're doing grand, Phil. I'm doing grand, Phil. Everyone listening or watching, are you all doing grand? Hmm. It's great for you to say. So let's get right into the show. So much has been going on, Phil, for the last week in the wrestling world. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah it's so... been a busy week. There's a lot on. Um. I suppose we should start off with the OTT tickets that went on sale um, yeah. on, on Friday. So, yeah, OTT, Joe is keeping busy himself. Uh, of course, uh, today is Sunday, so later on tonight, we actually have a big show going on tonight um, called The Showdown. And we have such a big lineup that I'm looking at right now. We have Sammy D taking on Renzo Rose. We have Cesc Martina taking on Anita Vaughn. We have the Sim versus Scott Davis versus Charlie Tim and Van and men like this in the money in the bank. That's gonna be a big one. That's gonna be a big one to witness. Uh, this is actually a stacked card. What do you think about the card, Phil? It looks very good. Yeah, the only thing I, I kind of stood out to me here was there's only four men in the money in the bank. I'm just you. I'm just used to a lot more. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because. Every time when somebody mentions about money in the bank, it's gonna be like just a stack, like more than six men. But I, 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 I for myself, even though it's like four fellas in this, it still looks like just an amazing matchup that's gonna be going on. Like so, yeah, I, uh, I and look I, at the camera. Yeah. No, I was gonna say I'm gonna go with Charlie Sterling because I think a heel should win. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, I'm. Oh, I'm just tied between like men like this or um Scott Davis, but. If I have to go with, I'm gonna have to go with Scotty Davis. He's always he's been there. He's been OTT for so long at this stage, and I feel like that he's actually get a chance to win. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry to the sim, still love you, still a fan, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you're you you're there in spirit. And um, uh, we got also Sammy D versus Renzo Rose. Uh, we mentioned earlier. I saw the promo package. Yeah, uh, and these two, these two have history. Uh, Sammy D was the one that brought Renzo Rose into OTT. Uh, for myself, I'm gonna have to go with Sammy D to retain the title, but yeah. I feel like that Renzo is gonna actually carry like most of the match himself. Yeah, the match, himself. the match is going to be so good. Renzo's going to come out looking like a million bucks, but he, I don't think he is going to win this one. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, he he will he will he will win the OTT championship down the line. I will call it right now. That's my saying out loud. That's me just being bold. Uh, and of course, we got Sesh Marth Martina versus Anita Vaughn. We mentioned that as well. Yep. Um, so I'm a big fan of the gals and us here at WrestleSam. We've been a huge follower of Anita Vaughn for so long. Um, really uh, digging what they're going on right now. Uh, but I'm still going to go with Sesh Marth. I can yeah. still see that Anita Vaughn will. Kind of similar to Renzo Rose earlier on, she will carry the match herself, but like she will look good in it. Yeah. What do you think, Phil? I think exactly the same, and I think they're going to build to Debbie and uh, Session Matter at the one, the one that will be going to in uh, October, the ninth, mm. the ninth anniversary show. Um, I think that's going to be the match, Debbie Keitel and uh, Session Matt Martina. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we, there was so much more that we actually I'm listening up right now. Uh, and um, if it is going to be on tonight, the show is going to be on tonight. So those who got your tickets, um, we hope you're having a good show. Fortunately, we couldn't make tonight. Um, 
due to scheduling conflicts. We all yeah. have busy schedules, what can you say? Especially Phil, you're all over the place recently as well. Yeah. Uh, the heart, probably the heart and soul of Deep Red Productions. And you mentioned it just a few minutes ago, Phil, about the OTT show in October, yeah. which is going to be the 90th year anniversary. Uh, it's There's going to be two shows uh, on the Friday, October the 27th at the Hangover he uh, Heaven area. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, thank you, Phil. <laughs> it's but live, like we said. And Saturday, October the 28th at the National Stadium in Dublin. Of course, you said to yourself, we're going to be there and uh, someone else is going to be there. And uh, let's just say that he's going to bring some um, some violence to OTT. Am I right, Phil? Yeah. yeah. My brother. <laughs> <laughs> Your brother, but also a man named John Moxley. Yeah. Now, yeah, so of course, um, John, he's meant to go into the past few OTT shows years back, as I remember. Yeah. But of course, um, it was at that brink, it was around COVID happened. So we don't have to explain that. Uh, he had to turn that offer down, unfortunately. Then we were going to have Moxley again um, back in March, was it, Phil? Yeah, yeah, March. Yeah, but unfortunately, due to scheduling conflicts with A with AEW, um, he had to turn it down. But we come back again this, uh, this year and we are looking forward to it. And Phil, I feel like you're more looking forward to it and your own brother. Yeah. yeah. So many times in the podcast that you and your brother are kind of Moxley fans. Yeah, my brother's a huge Moxley fan. I think he, I think he has 25,000 followers on Twitter. Whoa, that really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think people thought he was Moxley for a while, um, which is quite funny. But um, yeah. no, Moxley, there is actually still some tickets left to the show as well. Um, yeah. I, I know that yesterday there was issues with Moxley. Um, they were stuck. Tick, they put up a post saying tickets were stuck in limbo or something. Mm. Couldn't buy them, but I think I think for now they're still there and get them while you can because they seem to be selling out. The uh, first and second row completely sold out in the show. Uh, yeah. and there's still some s stalls and general seatings still available. But like I reckon this will be a sellout close to the show because Moxley is such a huge draw. Yeah, he, hopefully he fights their draw. Yeah, yeah. Is that who you actually want to see? Because I like it. Yeah, this. Yeah, I'd love it. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to see him fight someone up and coming rather than. I know he could fight big demo, but like you know, it's just some. I'd like to see Irish stars get the the preference. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because we mentioned it like at last week's episode. Uh, I personally would like to see him taking on Sammy D. Yeah. Uh, just because I feel like they have so many similar like gimmick wise and like match and layouts, like it'd be interesting to see. Uh, I'm also holding on hope. You said it, and Jerry said it themselves that LJ Cleary will be yeah. kind of a top pick against Moxley. Yeah, he's another one that's kind of would be great to go up against him. Um, it's just again, just I Irish talent. I know Big Demo is considered one of our own in the last few years, mm. um, but like it would just be so much better for. The Irish scene in general, because the Irish scene needs to be noticed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it is. I feel like that the Irish scene is getting more noticed by like um bigger stars um over in America, even though especially with AEW, uh, yeah. because I always felt like OTT is probably the best independent show there is, yeah. and we're just so fortunate that OTT is actually based in Ireland, is based in our backyard. Like yeah. Joe has came a long way with the company. Yeah. And seeing like so many talent coming into OTT is just something amazing. Like, and yeah, it's just something always to behold, as you think, Phil. Yeah, exactly. And then as well, just one last note on OTT. People should go and subscribe to their on demand service. It's not it's not that much, and there's so much good stuff on there. So much um, good stuff. Yeah. And, it, and it is less than 10 euro a month, so it's like it's so good. Yeah, two cups of coffee, lads. That's yeah. all it costs, like two cups yeah. of coffee. Definitely check it out. But yeah, you heard it here, lads. Uh, it's OTT night anniversary. Uh, tickets still unavailable uh, with the man himself, John Moxley. And there's other up and coming shows that we got coming up for OTT as well. Available on the website, www.ottwrestling.com. Check it out. More shows, more real. If you haven't been to OTT show before, what are you doing, lads? That's yeah, all we can say. What are you doing? It's something to behold, and we cannot wait to watch more. Uh, yeah.
So we're going to move on uh, to another wrestling company, Phil. Um, another independent wrestling company called WWE. <laughs> Have you heard of the company before, Phil? Or? I've never heard of them. Yeah, yeah, they're very up and coming. What can you say? Um, we had like a good, a grand show, I would say, of SmackDown. But the one match that everyone has seemed to be talking about is Edge taking on Sheamus. Uh, Phil, you're a busy man, as we said before, but did you get a chance to yeah, watch the match yourself? Very, very, very good match. Um, one thing I will say, though, because a lot of people are saying Edge is retiring. Mm. Um, you don't lose, you don't win, you're at a final match. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You don't. You just don't win your last match. So I, while I think it might be his last match in WWE, I don't think he's retiring. You don't think so, no? No, I don't think so. You don't win. Like you, you don't win the match. You just don't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it is a great match. It's just I, I was kind of like doubting. It was like they were teasing so much that Edge is actually going to be retiring. He's going to be yeah. leaving. I was like thinking like they're building up way too much, yeah. way too much. And it's making it not really believable, cause um, cause this still breaks my heart when Edge just like the first time he had to retire and he had to leave due to neck problems. We all know, yeah, it was just so sudden. Yeah, it was he got found out literally on the day, and if you're just gonna keep announcing it like a week, like weeks beforehand, yeah. it's just gonna kind of take the moment away from you. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, it's like we said, we're not saying that Edge is going to be retiring. We're not saying that he's going to return. But I think we're just going to play it by ear. But he yeah. did have a fantastic match. Yeah. Do you think? Brilliant. Yeah. Seamus so. was uh, probably the perfect opponent right now for him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I think I said this last week. I didn't understand why it was Seamus going to be his last one. But yeah. after we saw the off-air uh, when the cameras went off and Edge explaining why Sheamus is the perfect poem, we're like, yeah. makes sense, makes so yeah. much sense. Yeah. But um, though we don't know yet if Edge is gone, he did. He will. Really, he has had just one big, massive, amazing career. Yeah. Safe to say, I would. Say, I know it's cliche of me saying oh, Edge has an amazing career. There's so many moments by Edge that has such an amazing career that he can easily look back on. He has so many moments, so many matches, and about for the past twenty five years. Uh, what do you think about his past careers, uh, Phil? Because you're a fan, of course. Oh, is. yeah. It's just, again, this is new. Uh, for a lot of fans, this will be new because he didn't come back. There's a lot of new fans who would never have saw his old stuff. Um, mm. His second run was actually kind of underwhelming. Um, there's one or two matches I liked, but, like, you know, when Shawn Michaels came back that time, like, his second run was so good. Yeah. This edge just... Bits and pieces. It wasn't a whole run. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Um, because yeah, Edge did have an amazing career, as I said. But yeah, his second one was just kind of like here and there. Yeah, I mean, um, you said yourself, there's new fans tuning in to WWE. Yeah, they knew who Edge was. Like we were greeted to him, uh, from the beginning. Yeah, but they're just gonna see Edge as in like, oh, he's just a big deal of a wrestler. He started this stable of Judgment Day. He's watching maybe one or two matches. Had that moment at WrestleMania against Roman Reigns and uh, Brian Danielson. But yeah. uh, that was just this. That was just it. Like, so I can agree yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like the thing is, if you look back at it now, like you go Edge for AJ Styles at WrestleMania it wasn't very good. Mm. Edge for Balor and Hell in a Cell was okay at best. Yeah. It wasn't and, it wasn't this spectacular Hell in a Cell match that I know I I understand too that something's played into thing because Balor got very badly injured during yeah. the match. So it wasn't and, easy, but Yeah. And when you mentioned about that match, I don't know why all I can think of is the random sponsorship for uh the Pope's Exorcist. Oh yeah. They almost ruined it and playing an, an advert just in the middle. I'm like, ah, don't know what to feel about that. Yeah. But you forgot to mention about I, I was kind of slagging it at the beginning, but it was a pretty good match of Randy Orton versus Edge in the greatest wrestling match ever. It actually is good. It, that one was good. It, yeah. it, it was a good match. It's just because when they said it's the greatest wrestling match ever, it was like, yeah, but all great wrestling matches kind of is uh, went came out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. So you can't build it up. Like, it's very good. It is very good. And and I love the old school presentation of it with the old microphone and 
Mm. All that stuff, like oh, it was good, but again, it was just too. The only fault they have was too long. Like, wasn't it close to an hour? It was. It was actually almost an hour. I think I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, but because like he has so many moments when um when you we were talking about like his uh his career, is there one a particular moment in Edge's career that stands out to you, Phil? A moment, yes. Um. Because when I was young, WrestleMania 17, that ladder on that ladder spot with Jeff Hardy, mm. uh, it was just like I lost it. Like when I saw, I was so young at the time as well. I just lost it when I saw it. It was this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, of Edge just that spearing Jeff Hardy like off the top of the ladder, yeah, with GR going nuts and GR was so good at that time as well. It was just incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because I remember, I think Edge mentioned this on Logan Paul's podcast about that moment, how he wants to create moments, and yeah. he did admit that it was a like a stupid move at the time, but it's something that he's gonna look back on, he's proud of, because yeah. that's that's kind of what comes up for me as well, is the Dudley Boys versus the Hardy Boys versus Edge and Christian, because mm-hmm. we both grew up with Edge like yeah. being in the tag team, not as a singles competitor, so just seeing that image. Is just like something to to be amazed as in this is why wrestling is amazing. Yeah, he's a moment that risk is all. Yeah, um, and because I think another moment for me, uh, has to be I know I wouldn't say this is recent, but um, it's when he cashed in on John Cena. Yeah, yeah, just because um, I remember I watched it. I didn't understand what Money in the Bank was all about. Yeah, which, I don't think anybody did at that time. Yeah, so I just thought that oh, you just actually handed in but you you give time to prepare for the next pay per view. Yeah. I was like, oh you cash in whatever you want. So him defeating John Cena and New Year's resolution because John Cena was pretty much unbeatable at the time with the title. So seeing him losing it to somebody else uh was just something else. So that kind of made Edge's career like he became WWE champion, made his singles career. So that's kind of another moment for mine. So so many moments by Edge. Uh, a couple of other things that stand out for me is the SmackDown Tag Team Tournament in 2002. Mm. Edge and Ray, I thought they were an incredible tag team. Um, oh, yeah. Just all two in general on SmackDown was, especially in the summer, the summer onwards, it was just insanity. It was just great. Like I know Seamus says banger after banger after banger, but this time frame from 2002, 2003, SmackDown was... Uh, some of the best you, you'll ever see. You you'd be hard to beat it. It's just too good. Yeah, because Edge and Edge and Ray Mysterio has so many moments together. Yeah, they, because they know each other oh so well, and yeah. they kind of they had a bit of a similar uh, career. That makes sense. Like they both like kind of uh, Edge Ray Mysterio came in later, but then Edge was kind of getting more noticed as a singles competitor. Yeah, yeah. So that was this, but uh, but yeah, Edge has so many careers. So yeah. Like if you look back at Edge's career, he's won everything. Like he's won King of the Ring, Royal Rumble. You know he's won every belt almost. Mm. Um, does he? I don't know. I it might. I think he had a US title reign when it was WCW. He had a US title reign, yeah. yeah when it was he... WCW in the in two thousand one when he beat Test, which yeah. is really weird that two WWF fellas are fighting for a WCW. But it it just kind of like if you told me that twenty five years ago when WCW was in business. Two mm. WWF, two WWF fellas will be fighting for a WWF fellas. Like what? Okay. Yeah, um, but, but yeah, he's had so many good moments from his feuds with Kurt Angle, uh, his tag teams with Chris Edge and Christian. Uh just there's. I think if if you're out there like and you haven't seen Edge's old stuff, if you're a new fan, I'd go back and revisit 2000 to 2010, mm. if you can. Yeah, and like his uh, his also his um. His uh, matches with Chris Jericho as well, so yeah. many like, we yeah. can think of, uh, and of course, of course, him and Christian. Yeah. We we mentioned about his tag team career, but we talked about uh, Christian himself that they both reeked of awesomeness. They still yeah. do, there. But uh, but yeah, no, it's just unreal. Um, and this is a bit of a random. I think you mentioned this before, but it's a bit of a rumor yeah. that we're gonna probably see Edge at another independent wrestling company called AEW. We don't know if that's. Set in stone. Um, it seems to be more and more true, but we'll see. But the thing is, like people seem people have to realize as well that his contract isn't up for another three, four weeks. 
So mm. he can't be on the UK show. I know there's a lot of people who want him to be on it, but he impossibly he can't be on it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if that's the case, I'm just, uh, when you told me that idea, uh, I just thought, I can't really see it. Can't really see him being on AEW. It's like, uh, and because I immediately thought of Christian, because I like Christian's here run at the moment, the AEW at the moment, and I don't know how Edge is going to fit in with this. The uh, thing as well, guys, as well, right? What do, what do you call him? Because Adam Page is too near Adam. You know what I mean? The mm. two Adams, they can't. Like, does he go back to <laughs> does he go back to Damon Stryker or Sexton Harcastle? <laughs> which is his old names in WSW in the early 90s, which is quite funny. I'd okay. actually like if he was sexed in Harcastle, that would be hilarious. That, that would be something, but just because like it's just a WB name. Uh, yeah, I, I can't say that he's going to come back as Adam Copeland because that's what everyone else knows him as now. But yeah. uh, but that'd be something else if he's just going to go back to his old independent name. Like, so, but he'll always just. Yeah, but like, like, I ask you, right, out of 100%, how much would you say he'll join AEW? Hundred uh, percent. I would say I'm gonna give it about a, a forty. If that I'm, makes go, I'm gonna say seventy. Oh well, yeah. okay, Phil, out of the out of the gate in that one. Yeah, I think I think he's been offered ridiculous amounts of money to to join them for two years. That's yeah. just what, that's what I think anyway. Well, uh, that that's actually a big one now, Phil. That so yeah. the but, only uh, problem I have is like, who does he feud with and? Does he just become another star after six weeks? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because let's be honest now, because we're going to shift gears uh, yeah. to AEW. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about like uh, AEW All In. Um, now, it's safe to say Tony Khan has so much on his plate right now, Phil. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. The whole company, the whole company is in such this like there is good obvious, obviously there's great things on the show with Adam Cole and MGF and stuff like that but mm. there's so much going on with negativity with Punk and then there's also the drama during the week with uh, Cash Wheeler getting arrested uh, yeah. that they have to address yeah I honestly don't know what they're going to do with that because that's still on the card of yeah. uh, FTR taking on the Young Bucks yeah um it's upsetting because to me, FTR is probably one of the best tag teams at the moment. Like, um, so I don't know how they're going to play with that at all. Um, are they just going to scrap the entire match? Well, I, I think I, I read yesterday from a lot of uh, sites were saying that the match is going to go ahead as planned. Um, they are allowing him to travel. Um, so the match will go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is one week from today as well because we're recording this on a Sunday this week for scheduling reasons. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah, we just uh, we have so much on our plate right now. But um, AEW all in because uh, we our own Jerry, the host, the boss himself, Jerry Gotten, will be over in AEW all in. So if he's if you see him to say can we hello, we got um to be part of media. Uh, yeah. so he's gonna be over there. So if you guys are going all in, and if you happen to see Jerry, just say like, give him a high five, say how are you doing, yeah. and uh, tell him that the rest of the other members of the rest of them send him up, send you over, and said hi. Never know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but um, but yeah, I'm looking at the card at the moment, and uh, I think the one match that will always stand out for me, and I don't know why it has to be CM Punk versus Samoa Joe. Yeah. Um, just because um I've always been a huge fan of their matches, they always I feel like they do try and put like banger to banger. Do, is this gonna be the final match with CM Punk and Small Joe? You'd like to think so. Like they've had hour long draws in Ring of Honor almost twenty years ago. Um, they've had some their feuds have been believable over the years. I think this will be a good match. I don't know how good it'll be. I suppose it'll depend on both men and if they're in pain or not. Um, they did an angle last night where CM Punk was dressed up as like an El Luchador type, type character. Yeah, I, I didn't see the match, but I saw images of it on Facebook. I'm like, hey, is that Punk? It is Punk. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, and then they did the unmasking and there was a huge pop. But like Punk is Punk's in the news every other week. I'm just hoping for a week of a break from him, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm but still, the, match, I'm... the match will be brilliant. I think it'll be good. Yeah, I'm still I'm still a punk fan. I'm still yeah. always gonna be a punk fan. But there will be a time where I feel like, I mean, do we have enough for punk in the news right now? Just let him just like. The only thing that really bothers me about this is this real world championship. I I'm not. I don't like that. 
I don't like. You're, I don't. You're, like not, you're not a fan of the real world championship. I no? don't because it's going to be. I know it's going to be MGF and Punk. Probably. Uh, do you know what? AEW have another pay per view next the week after. <laughs> yeah, they do straight after. So they have like a week <laughs> event. Yeah. To- so like, what are they going to do? CM Punk and MGF? I don't know. Yeah, and, and they have like a week build. Build. And uh, because they're going to be in London, they're going to be probably fighting a bit of jet lag. Exactly. And then they have to go back and do dynamite and everything before that show as well. Mm. Uh, but there's so much stuff. Like, there's there's a lot of, like, go through, if we go through the card there quickly, because there's a lot of stuff on it that is very strange and very strange um, shoot matches that I wasn't expecting for this. There is. I'm actually looking at the match right now. There was so many matches going on. Um, we'll talk about. I don't know if we should talk about this, but how do you feel about Chris Jericho versus Will Ospreay, Phil? Um, I think it'll be very good. There's not, there's no denying it, but it's just so. I think everybody was expecting Omega and Osprey three, so I think it's almost. I I like Chris Jericho. I really do. I just think it's almost underwhelming. Mm, mm. Yeah, because I felt like it was definitely out of nowhere. Yeah, Chris Jericho is one of my favorites of all time. Will Ospreay is one of the best wrestlers in the world. But uh, it was just the random build to it. Yeah, I'm exactly. About him, like, but oh, this yeah. this match right is going to show the world how good Will Osprey is because he can't go as fast as he always does. So he's yeah. going to have to bring it down to Jericho. To Jericho's kind of what's the word I'm looking for? Jericho's kind of movements, I suppose. They're going to bring it down to Jericho's uh, tempo. Yeah, like, Will Osprey is like five, 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 where he's going to have to be probably three or four. Because yeah. Jericho is, you have to remember, Jericho is fifty-four years old. He can't keep up with young guys. You know what I mean? And Will Osprey is only um, is he thirty now? Is he? Yeah, he's twenty-nine or thirty. Oh, 20, he's twenty-nine. I'm twenty-nine, and yeah. I have a back. My God, William, <laughs> why that? Making us look bad, but. Yeah, I think there's another opportunity to show who Will Ospreay is, uh, yeah. because not a lot of people know who he is, Phil. Yeah, or well, like uh, I think his name will become synonymous when that match is over. Yeah, yeah, uh, and of course we have. I don't know if this match is still going on. MJF versus Adam Cole. Yeah, main event. Yeah, uh, God, I'm I'm having so many mixed emo- uh, feelings about that just because of um, uh, just because I love. Um, better than you, baby, in so many ways. So, in fact, I can, I think, I can, I have a feeling that someone's going to turn on each other. Oh yeah, one hundred. Like I think earlier in the night, obviously, MGF and Cole are fighting for the Ring of Honor tag titles in they the are, opening, yeah. in the opening match. Well, that's on the pre-show, but like they surely do something in that match that leads, you know, to later in the evening. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. MGF retains and then Adam Cole Adam Cole is going to turn on him after the match yeah because I can see MJF actually becoming a, 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 a MJF is already a, a face I mean yeah. I couldn't take him seriously at first because I was like he's always been a heel but he's doing it well Um, and I can see him being the um, champion till the great bidding war comes up yeah I think so I think yeah. if you look at it like there's a show there's a show the week after I think I think MGF Adam Cole too is get, is clearly happening. There's mm. no other match they can do. You know what I mean? Like, as long as there's not a DQ finish or something like that, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, yeah. Real quick, I just ended. I'm gonna go back to the match. I'm gonna call it now. Sammy Guevara might turn on Chris Jericho against Will Ospreay. He might, yeah. yeah. Or one hundred percent. I agree with you. Yeah. So. But uh, but no, it has a great build. Besides all the drama, besides everything back uh, yeah. happened in AEW, it looks like a well done stack card. It, um, it'll, be, it'll be a very good show. It's just again, there's a lot of people not on the show. Mm, mm. Uh, like, would you say, Phil, that you're still a fan of AEW? Yeah, oh yeah, I'd, I I watch it, but not as much as I did. Like I I used to watch the shows from start to finish. Now it's kind of picking and choosing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're the same as me. I used to be a big fan of AEW, and now I just kind of like t- tune in here and there, watch the major shows and everything else like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So I think. But again, I, like, this, there's another match there as well. Like that, I think is is uh, I don't like the match part. A lot of people love it, the Stadium Stampede match. Yeah, uh, I'm here and there when it comes to it. 
I always felt like it's just like turn off your brain and have a good time match. Like the first one was amazing with the horse and everything and the empty pitch. Yeah. Because it was at that time where cinematic matches was actually just like all over the place. But they did it so well, I thought. Yeah, you have 12 guys brawling all over a sta- stadium. It's going to be very hard to keep up with it. Mm, especially those poor cameramen, especially the production crew and everything else like that. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm not a fan of AEW, but it's just when I saw the Texas Chainsaw match. Oh, yeah. My God. <laughs> no, I, th- I think this would be something that... Uh, one of the top 10 lists of things you should forget about AEW. And this is like the when they were promoting Army of Darkness, that one WWE show uh, yeah. for Backlash. Yeah. It was like that. Right. Yeah. So yeah. That, that is AEW. And before we wrap up, we're talking about another show. Another show called RCW. Uh, and they're getting to work. Or they're, they're getting to work. So let's go to work. Rebel City Dogs at the Kino. Back at it again announced and uh so far we have a good up lineup of a match we have sham the sham versus j money j money he's always welcome in cork j money uh, back is his first match in a while uh he made a surprise appearance at the last um uh, a uh, rcw show he was in the box yeah did the big reveal with charlie what's in the box speaking <laughs> of what's in the box charlie this would probably be the biggest wrestling rivalry of the century phil What's in the box, Charlie versus the Sam? Box versus bag match. Box versus bag match. What's in the box? What's in the bag? We have to wait till September the 9th to find out. What is it? That's the most sensation. Every, t- every time I see what's in the box, Charlie, I just said, like, we have to see Charlie, but what's in the box? What do you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think this, I actually think the Sam is going to take it. Yeah. So, uh, and who's going to get paid? Uh, Charlie, 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 Give me a new match because you seem to get hit at these shows. <laughs> Imagine, <laughs> for fuck's sake! <laughs> oh god, I'm I think I'm 29 years old. And my back's already fucked, so now we know the reasons, lads. For God's sake, <laughs> let's move on. And of course, we have LJ Cleary defending his RCW World Title against Mark Andrews. That's awesome, a big one to see. That's Mark- be, like, incredible. Yeah, every time I see uh, LJ Cleary, like, in any ring, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I mean, he is not known as the MVP of Irish wrestling for nothing now, Phil. And Mark Andrews is an amazing competitor, amazing wrestler, so I just can't wait to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, more announcements will be coming up soon, so tune into their Facebook, social, uh, Instagram. Also, also, as well, make sure you listen to their new podcasts. Yeah, that's going to be coming up. Luke Barry himself is going to be hosting this, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So that is going to be. Stay something. tuned for announcements on it because it's coming soon. Yeah. Coming way soon. So much stuff going on with RCW. So much stuff going at the wrestling in Cork. It is a really good time to be a proud Corkonian, proud wrestling fan. So that is it. It is RCW, Rebel City Dogs. Let's go to work. September the 9th at the Kino. It is actually something to look forward to. Uh, and don't forget to check out the exclusive interview with Jerry and Billy Bedlam. Uh, it is still available on the YouTube page. Huge yeah. announcements. Huge announcements. We're not going to tell you here. You might as well look, go back and have a listen. It is something to listen to. Just something amazing. And uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter. We're not saying X yet. No, we're not calling it X. We're on Twitter and Instagram. We're back on being more active on Instagram, getting more followers every day. Be sure to comment. That's something we always have to say in every episode, Phil. Yeah. If you go yeah. back, you'll find so much old stuff there. There's so much content. It's If you go back, you'll probably catch loads of old Impact Wrestling interviews and old shows. And just, be, I'd like people to comment more um, mm-hmm. on all these shows because they really do. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have so many of like, of, um, we have like, um, we have so many views coming up. And we thank each and every one of you for all to tune in for all of the Cork banter. Uh, I mean, this is a history-making show, Phil. I'm yeah. hosting. This is something that I'm like, well, let's hope that I'll be brought back on for the next one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, you know, we'll see, we'll see you do more interviews as well in the future. Um, that's all we'll say for now. Okay. You never know. We might have you on camera, Phil. We might one day. We need to see you on the face. We need to see you. I mean, you're rocking the freshly cut haircut, like. 
uh, that is it. But that's just want to say thanks everyone for tuning in, and we'll keep posted for the next one. Uh, and that is all we're going to say. Be sure to comment. That's the last thing we're going to have to say now. So, Phil, any any last couple of messages? Uh, looking forward to AEW next week. And, and also, as well, support Impact Wrestling because they're on the same... I know they're on the same night. Um, mm. Emergence. That'll also be a good show. There's just so much wrestling on in general over the next few weeks. Yeah, um, yeah. Even today, like there's Multiverse of uh, Multiverse 2 Impact. Um, yeah. there's just so much stuff like we 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 couldn't get it all in because it's, we'd be talking for hours. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like I need. I feel like that every wrestling fan, everyone, a uh, huge wrestling sports needs to have like an actual schedule notebook. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's just so much stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it, I feel like I feel like being a wrestling fan can be a full time job here and there, but yeah. uh, but we do our always... best with everything we can. Yeah, so, but look, that's all we got there, lads. Be sure to tune in for the next show soon. So much more coming up, so much going on in the Irish scene right now. And thank you for watching. Have a good day, lads, and just watching. Bye, guys.